Hello and welcome. If you haven't been to my YouTube channel before, my name is Reed, and today we're going to be tearing down a capacitance manometer vacuum gauge. So this is the capacitance manometer that we have. Uh, it's a Edwards Baracell pressure sensor, and in this case, the full scale pressure of it is 100 millitor. So we would expect that at the high end of the range, this can measure 100 millitor. The low end of the range that it can be expected to measure is, well, four decades below that, so 0.1 millitor. What we would expect as an output from this, um, I already know ahead of time that this vacuum pump can pump down to approximately 50 millitor. So 50 millitor is half of the full scale range. Uh, if you read the data sheet, uh, this pressure sensor actually needs plus and minus 15 volts in, and you can expect a, a 10 volt out at full scale. So if it's reading the, the pressure correctly, as this vacuum pump reaches its absolute pressure, this pressure sensor should give us an output of about five volts. So as we turn the vacuum pump on, we can pump the pressure down. And I'll show the voltages. But as I turn on the voltages, so plus and minus 15 volts are being applied. The output we get is not stable at all. Uh, it's hovering around one volt between negative zero and one volt. Um, so this pressure transducer is obviously bad. And as we turn the, the vacuum pump off, you can see as the pressure rises, the voltage climbs, which is expected behavior. That's good behavior. But what we should have gotten is, you know, we would have expected at the base pressure of this vacuum pump as it pumps all the way down, we should have gotten a voltage of five volts. Uh, that's clearly not the case here. So something is amiss in this pressure sensor. And today we're going to tear it down to see if we can figure out uh, if anything is obviously wrong and to try to understand the inner workings of one of these a little bit better. Wow. So there's this foam on the outside, some sort of insulation. Maybe I'll just try slitting this seal and opening it that way. Okay, yeah, that's the best way. So a couple of chips, as well as some potentiometers for adjusting the zero point, the span, probably some other voltages as well on the control board itself. So this, um, as with any capacitance manometer, is actually not a sensor, but a transducer, meaning that it doesn't just output uh, the raw signal that it has inside of it, it actually has an active circuit board that is giving you the signal output. I think this is a heating element on the outside, some sort of resistive heating pad that's placed around the outside of the whole, the whole transducer.
There we go. Let's see what we have here. Oh, the ribbon continues down to yet another circuit board. That I wasn't expecting. I think this one it does pop out of. Um, unfortunately, the pins are a little bit bent, so getting it back in there is going to be interesting. So yeah, there's this little groove as well that, that this O-ring sits in. Quite a nice design. So you can see in here too, there's a copper tube right here where that hole is in the circuit board. And that copper tube has been pinched off, meaning that there's some reference pressure on the top side of the transducer that they set originally and they pinched it off much in the same way of copper gas pipes in a house. So if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to remove the circuit board now. I expect there to be a couple of wires sticking. Yeah, perfect. So there's the second layer of circuit board. I guess we can put it here for safekeeping. And under it, we see those two pins, which are actually the gauge themselves that stick up onto these pins of the circuit board. And those are fed through down into, you know, whatever reference pressure that this is set at. I would expect that the reference pressure used for this gauge is absolute vacuum or as close as they could get to it since this is such a low pressure gauge. But yeah, very interesting design. I still don't know what this hole, um, this cylinder poking up out of the body is. Nor do I know what this mesh here is. I'm not sure what that is either. But I think if we remove these two pilot screws, that might be revealing. Okay, so after a brief interlude, I uh, drilled out the hole and we got through that nasty rusted bolt mostly. Um, I actually accidentally drilled a little too far, so there's yeah, a little bit of da damage on the flange itself, but hey, here we are. We finally got that out. So I realized though, I'm not gonna be able to get too far on this side because if you pull up these, basically what we find is some more of what I just believe to be resistive heating elements. There's not really much up there other than fancy that two more of these types of bolts. Let's see if I can get these off. Hopefully this goes better. Yeah, that one was easy. These ones aren't external facing, so hopefully they go a little bit better. Yeah, that was slick. Okay, so interesting. I think this frees this body to rotate. As I rotate this, the inner body rotates with it. Um, you can see here. So that's, that's, so in theory, if I was really ambitious, I could cut this flange off. Um, you can even find models that come Without this flange at all, this is a NW25 flange, I believe. Let me, let me just measure, I can check. Nope, NW16 flange. 
Um, you can even find ones that come with VCR flanges or no flange at all. Well, we can see a little bit more. I would absolutely love to get this off of here, but short of getting some plasma cutters, I don't know how I can do that. I guess an angle grinder. So this is itself the capacitance manometer. I wish, yeah, I wish there was an easier way to actually get inside of it, but basically the diaphragm in the middle of this fluctuates. Uh, it's able to move up and down with the pressure that's being exerted on the bottom of it. And it changes the pressure accordingly. So it, it actually, one, one thing that's very cool about these capacitance manometer gauges is that it doesn't matter what gas is pushing. It's just a pure pressure sense. So it could be air, it could be nitrogen, it could be helium, and it wouldn't actually affect the pressure readouts of this gauge. That's not true with many other vacuum gauges. One of the most notable being thermocouple gauges. Those you need a gas correction factor if you can use them at all for your particular gas. So this looks like about as far as we'll get inside of it. This is really a, a, a well-built device aside from that, you know, rusted bolt. If they had used a little bit of anti-seize, that probably wouldn't have happened. But then again, this is a very old instrument, so they probably don't plan for it having a lifetime as long as this anyway. This one, I would guess, is from the 90s. Maybe it says, hmm, yeah, it doesn't say on the shell. 0306? Maybe that means the sixth month of the third year of the 2000s, or it could be the other way around. March of 2006, I'm not sure exactly. And if we hadn't had to drill into this flange and kind of destroy this so badly, I would probably make a repair attempt uh, Looks like there's some easy voltage test points down here. Um, all of this is pretty much proprietary as far as the schematic goes. However, those test points are handy and you can always test the components individually. These resistors are, I think, carbon resistors. They don't exactly inspire confidence. Those would probably be one of the first things. I would swap out as well as, I mean, a lot of this looks like it's kind of a custom job. The resistor soldering onto these pins, that must be some option that this board has. I'm not sure why they would run that through production unless maybe it was just a limited run pave flex. Interesting as well. I don't, I'm not familiar with Paveflex. Maybe they made this, this piece of plastic. Might be a plastics manufacturing firm. But anyway, I have many of these devices and they do go bad rather often. I'd be curious to see what the common cause, if it's just some sort of circuit issue or if it truly is part of the, the capacitance manometer going bad. This gauge was meant for 100 millitor, so it being stored at room temperature all the time, technically it's over pressure by a lot. So just being stored at over pressure might not be good for the gauge itself. Maybe that causes it to fail as well. I don't, I'm not super familiar with the storage conditions for these either. I do know when they work, they work really well and they're one of the state of the art type gauges. This is really the type of gauge you want if you're trying to measure vacuum at an absolute scale. I mean, for low pressures, it's, it's the way to go. I really want to dig in and see what's behind this mesh. Nope, just the mesh. Wonder what it's for. Ah, there's some beads inside of it. It's clear this is a desiccant. Yes, it keeps everything in here a little bit 
more dry probably. Um, it was spot welded onto the case here. So yeah, that's a desiccant packet. I've never seen one in a stainless mesh pouch before. That's very cool. Wouldn't have thought to do that, but I guess that's potentially the easiest way to attach it onto this device. Hmm. And I am curious, I want to test the resistances of these as well, just to see if it's reasonable that they are some sort of heating tape, resistive heating tape. I think they might be. Let's just try out, see if we can tell. Spread these pins apart. Hundred forty five ohms. If you put one volt across it, V equal IR, you would have current being one over one hundred and forty five, which is a reasonable value. Yeah, I think this is a resistive heating element, resistive heating tape of some kind. And that's also what um, these on the bottom are as well has to be, um, you know, these two, what these two yellow ones lead to, there is another resistive heating element right there on, on the base. We started with a broken gauge and we ended with a broken gauge that's even more broken. So there's some very interesting manufacturing going on here. It's interesting to me too, that there are two layers of circuit board. Like one is sealed quite well underneath this o-ring with the desiccant packet so that's a controlled type of environment interesting that they needed a controlled environment for this board like, must be some sort of high precision required probably due to this this chip i would imagine it's hermetically sealed i'll have to look up what this package is so I looked it up, as it turns out, these two are just some op amps. This package is a diode array, and I looked up the data sheet for it. And the data sheet basically just shows how the can is just a bunch of diodes that you can connect to in the setup. If we look back to the actual pins that are connected to, we see one, two, three, four, maybe five, six. So maybe only three of the diodes are being used, even though there's six total diodes in here. But, but really, I mean, it's, it's just a bunch of matched diodes in one package. Uh, it has nothing really special about it. If we even go down to look at the temperature dependence of the diodes, it's nothing special. I mean, this is to be expected behavior from typical silicon diodes at room temperature, they have a forward voltage of about 0.7 volts. I don't really understand why you would want to, you know, warm it up and change the forward voltage. Um, the only other thing that changes with temperature is the reverse current, which I, you know, again, don't really see why you would want to change that. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any insight as to why, this board specifically is temperature controlled or is in you know some more controlled environment so that it um, is kept dry and kept warmer i would love to hear about uh, why you think that that uh, this board is actually in some sort of temper con temperature controlled environment it doesn't seem like anything special just an analog board but maybe there's something else going on here that i don't know about so leave a comment below if you know anything uh, about these boards so that was part one of the teardown. I'm still deciding on whether or not I want to actually tear down into the gauge itself. Um, that, that little section, that cylinder that contains the actual um, capacitor, I guess, so to speak. Who knows, maybe I'll tear into it and it won't actually be anything that interesting, just the metal plate. Or maybe there will be something interesting and I'll post it later. Uh, if you'd like to see a part two either way, let me know in the comments. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.